Welcome to IC. My name is Samuel Vogel and it's great that you can join us today for our online service. If you want to find out more about our church, about the International Evangelical Church, go to our website, church.fi. But in a moment, you will also see some news and announcements about what is happening, how we can join. So have a look and get back to us if you have any questions. But now, God bless you as we are worshiping together. Hi everyone, I just want to share quickly a quick testimony about the prayer room. I've been really blessed by that. Um, since we started the prayer room uh, earlier on, it was not two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, it's just been really a blessing to every day uh, that you can join it, go on there, pray together, share your heart, share things that's concerned for you, um, hear what other, what's important for other people and, and pray for them. One of the members in our group just said the, um, the other day that she has never felt so close to our congregation as she does right now. That it feels that we are sitting right there in her in her kitchen, in her living room. And um, I think that's been definitely for me as well the case. Like I, I felt, I feel so close, such a great bond um, to everybody. And I would encourage you to to join join our prayer group. So, so prayer room. So it's on Mondays and Tuesdays at six o'clock, and Wednesday to Saturday at twelve o'clock at this stage. Um, maybe we'll change the time or maybe we'll make more times available as more hosts are, are, are coming there. But they work like this, that we have a small devotion or a scripture basically that we read in the beginning. And then we have 15 to 20 minutes of prayer and we close most often with the Lord's Prayer at the end. Um, next Wednesday, Annie and Marcus Laurenkari from Taiwan, our missionaries, they, um, I've invited them to come and join us. So they're going to come and join as well and uh, dial in and we can pray for them and we can hear what's happening in their life how do they manage with the coronavirus in taiwan and then as well we thought to have a special um uh, special focus like we'll start different focuses and one of the things that that would be really good is to pray for the parents and for the teachers and for the kids who's now in this kind of extra orange circumstances studying from home and and, and probably all the difficulties that, that that goes along with that and all the blessings that probably goes along with that so yeah, I, I just really want to encourage you, if you have time, join, join the prayer rooms. Um, it's, it's a real blessing. Thanks. Bye. Good morning, church. How are you? My name is Gandhi Ginting and I am the worship leader in IEC. We just created our new team in IEC. We call it as Multimedia Team. Since it's very new team, we would like to invite people to join this Multimedia Team. What we do, everything related to live streaming, pre-recording, video editing, slide editing, or every single Sunday. Please let me know if you are interested in knowing those things. I would like to share my knowledge, and also I would like to learn something from you. So you know how to find me, just go to the church suite and get my email address and phone number. Ring me anytime. It's really fun, easy, and you learn so many things from this. People out there in their house waiting for us every single Sunday. So let's do it together. God bless you and looking forward. Yeah, very good morning to you all, uh, members of the International Evangelical Church. Uh, greetings from uh, the council. I'm Sach Gaya, a member of the council, and I'd like to make an announcement concerning uh, financial aid that would be available to uh, people who attend our church at this time uh, when uh, there's so much financial instability. So the, the pastor, the council, and uh, the entire leadership uh, recognize and are aware that uh, 
some of the people who attend our church are in financial dire straits right now because of the corona pandemic. So a decision has now been made to extend help to people who find themselves in uh, such a situation from uh, an already existing fund, which we call the CARE Fund, that was originally dedicated to helping people with small loans in uh, emergency situations. If you are one such person, uh, then we would like to reach out to you and extend the help that we can to you. So we encourage you to get in touch with us. Please uh, uh, write to the church via communications at church.fi and uh, Samuel Fogel, the pastor of our church of Willem Hiki, who is our um, office manager, will get back to you with details and uh, just let you know whether you qualify. At the same time, uh, we of course would like to appeal to everyone who is able to give at this time, particularly to this fund, uh, to give generously so that uh, we would be able to help as many people as possible uh, who, who are facing difficult times right now to just replenish that fund and make sure that we always have something that we can extend to other people that are, are less fortunate. God bless you and uh, keep well, keep safe and keep praying as well. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the old earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my praise That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, just as I sing for all that you've done for me Bring a chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King of our Who rules the nation with truth and justice Shine like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King of our volcano This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you will take my place That you will bear my cross you lay down your life That I will be set free Oh, just as I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered a grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered a grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy Oh, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you will take my place 
that you will bear my cross You lay down your life That I will be set free Oh, Jesus I sing for All that you've done for me This is amazing grace This is unfailing love that you will take my place That you will bear my cross You lay down your life That I will be set free Oh, Jesus I sing for All that you've done for me So I'm really excited that we will start a new series today. For the next weeks, we will look into prayer. That means we will study passages in the Bible that talk about prayer, teach about prayer. But actually, we also want to pray together. And we hope that as a church, we become even more of a praying church as a result of that. Uh, right now, there's already daily an opportunity to join the online prayer room. We encourage you to check that out. If you have not been able to do that yet, you can also just join and listen in as we pray. So by joining the prayer meeting, you're not obliged even to pray yourself. Just check it out. Then we might also have uh, longer prayer meetings. Just follow the announcements on the website and via church suite, check your WhatsApp. And let's see what we learn together about prayer. But why? Why prayer? Last week, we were celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. We looked at John chapter 20, and we saw that God was doing something new on that first day of that first week of a new creation. And on the evening of that day, what happens is that the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sight. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you have been joining us last week, you remember that Jesus already called his followers, his disciples, brothers, which he has not been doing before the resurrection. Something new is happening. It's a new creation. And just as God has been breathing and bringing man alive at the beginning of creation. So here it is. The Son of God, who conquered death, who is breathing his Holy Spirit into his church, into his followers. Uh, it's a bit like the food washing that we looked at two weeks ago, where already before his crucifixion, Jesus is pointing to what he's doing. This encounter on the first day of the week on Resurrection Sunday is pointing to Pentecost, to the disciples, the church receiving the Holy Spirit. But shouldn't that mean that all of us find it very easy to communicate with God? We're not only his disciples, we are not only friends, we are brothers and sisters, we are his children. Shouldn't we communicate every day, um, naturally, continually, with ease, enjoying it? Now, my experience and maybe yours is that this is not always the case um, many times and actually many christians <laughs> christians throughout the centuries have found that prayer is important but it is not always as easy as we wish it would be nonetheless at the beginning of the alpha course we talk about prayer being the most important activity of our life a bit like breathing now, if you think of the situation you're in, the COVID-19 pandemic, 
we are reminded how important breathing is because it decides over life and death. If you can breathe, you stay alive. And it's the same with God's Holy Spirit that is breathed into us. And it's the same actually with prayer. Prayer is the breathing of the soul, the way how we connect with God, how we communicate with him through our Lord Jesus in the Holy Spirit. So how do we do that? How do we pray? Well, we will look at the Lord's Prayer and use that as a kind of compass to navigate through all the ways we can pray. And I find it really encouraging that the reason we have the Lord's Prayer is the disciples asking Jesus, teach us to pray. Luke 11, that's one of the two places where the Lord's Prayer is recorded. And there it says that one day, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And I think the disciples, they realized themselves that prayer is not that easy, which is really encouraging. Even for them, it didn't come as natural, but they must have noticed the difference it made. That is the question they ask. They don't ask, how can we preach better? How can we plant more churches? They ask, Lord, teach us to pray. And in response, Jesus gives them this prayer. Uh, I like what Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the leader of the Anglican Communion said about the Lord's Prayer. He said, the Lord's Prayer is simple enough to be memorized by small children. In fact, uh, in the language that Jesus would have used, Aramaic, the Lord's Prayer is a poem that is extremely easy to remember. But at the same time, it is so profound, it can sustain a whole life of prayer. And maybe one of the reasons for that is that in the Lord's Prayer, we find all these different dimensions of prayer. There's adoration, worship, petition, intercessory prayer, uh, Prayer of confession, uh, prayer of warfare, spiritual warfare, all these different kinds of prayer, listening prayer, are included in the Lord's Prayer. But um, that does not mean prayer is difficult. Prayer is actually very easy. And the best way to start and grow your prayer life and keep it alive is by keeping it simple, keeping it real, and keeping it up. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start with keeping it simple. Prayer is not meant to be difficult. Start with the Lord's Prayer. It is not a very long prayer and it's not particularly difficult to read it and to pray it. Simple can also mean look of a place and a time that work for you. I think it's, it's significant that in Luke 11, we're reminded that Jesus was praying in a certain place. And the disciples must have noticed that Jesus had a rhythm of prayer. We are told that sometimes he prayed very early, sometimes an entire night, but also that he was withdrawing to certain places to actually pray. In Acts 2 on the Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, we're told first that the Holy Spirit filled the house, the place, and then he filled the disciples. Jesus himself says in Matthew 6 verse 6, when you pray, go into your room and close the door. The place matters and a good choice can make prayer much easier, can make it simple. Um, in our apartment, uh, my favorite place is my armchair. That's, that's the place I love to pray. That's the place I find it easiest to pray. Um, sometimes I have the problem that my cat has also noticed that this is the best place in our apartment. But this is it for me. What is it for you? Where's your armchair? Where is your tent of meeting? Where do you find it easy to pray? It's good to start with these very simple questions. I have also some places in nature, in the forest where I love to go. Sometimes I love to pray by walking. Keep it simple. But then also, 
make sure you keep it real. When you pray, if you pray loudly, you don't have to change your voice and have a very holy voice to pray. And you don't have to change your language and use words that you would not use with everyone, anyone else. Keep it real, be yourself. But most importantly, don't hide anything. Don't pretend everything is okay in prayer when really nothing is okay in your life. Tell God how you feel, whether you're frustrated, where you're hurting, where you're disappointed. That is just as important to him than hearing what we're grateful for and what we praise him for and what we rejoice about. Don't talk with God only about what you think you should be talking about. Talk with God about what you want to talk about. It's interesting that the English word prayer comes from a Latin word, precare, which is also the root for the English word precarious. Now, when life is dangerous, when everything is upside down, when everything is uncertain, when everything is shaky, then we find it easiest to pray. And therefore, prayer is all about being real. But then finally, keep it up. Jesus in Luke 18, he's giving a parable to his disciples. And then Luke tells us Jesus specifically told his disciples this parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. You know, every relationship lives from structures that kind of maintain that relationship. And that's true for marriage, but that's true for any friendship. All of them need some structure. Um, it's been said that delight without discipline dissipates. Uh, what does it mean? It means that no relationship can survive purely on emotional or spiritual highlights. Structure is needed. And for prayer, vital structures would be reading your Bible regularly, um, attending uh, Christian fellowship, meeting regularly for worship or for common prayer, joint prayer, corporate prayer, like the online prayer room. These all are ways that provide a good structure for us and help us to just keep going. But then most importantly, because prayer is not difficult, just start. Get going and pray. How to start? Psalm 46 verse 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. This is what God says. And in a way, prayer means, praying means uh, to take a pause from claiming and pretending we are in control. Um, it means to take a vacation from striving and struggling and fighting to be in control. It is a way of saying, Lord, you are in control. And that's why I come to you. I find it helpful when I start to pray to sometimes just start by making a pause, calming down, breathing in, thanking God for his Holy Spirit. And then I keep it simple, I keep it real, and I keep it up. Let's pray. Well, thank you for your Holy Spirit that you breathe over us and into us to keep us alive, to sustain us. Lord, in these coming weeks, we ask you that you would teach us anew to pray. And so we want to pray even now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and all the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Valtias kuningas ainia meren mania taivan kaiken wonut ot valtias kuningas ainia pelastuksen kallio vava turva me. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you and great that you could tune in. We invite you warmly to join us again next week for the next service and also as we continue that series on prayer. But please, by all means, join us today for the prayer room. Join us during the week. Check the announcements. Check the website to find out when the prayers are happening. And let's continue to learn how to pray and to pray together would you receive the blessing now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you and may the lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit amen see you next week
Hi everyone. I just want to share quickly a quick testimony about the prayer room. I've been really blessed by that. Um, since we started the prayer room uh, earlier on, it was not two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, it's just been really a blessing to every day uh, that you can join it, go on there, pray together, share your heart, share things that's concerned for you. Um, hear what other what's important for other people and, and pray for them. One of the members in our group just said the, um, the other day that she has never felt so close to our congregation as she does right now. That it feels that we are sitting right there in her in her kitchen, in her living room. And um, I think that's been definitely for me as well the case. Like I, I felt I feel so close, such a great bond um, to everybody. And I would encourage you to to join join our prayer group. So, so prayer room. So it's on Mondays and Tuesdays at six o'clock, and Wednesday to Saturday at twelve o'clock at this stage. Um, maybe we'll change the time or maybe we'll make more times available as more hosts are, are, are coming there. But they work like this, that we have a small devotion or a scripture basically that we read in the beginning. And then we have 15 to 20 minutes of prayer and we close most often with the Lord's Prayer at the end. Um, next Wednesday, Annie and Marcus Laurenkari from Taiwan, our missionaries, they, um, I've invited them to come and join us. So they're going to come and join as well and uh, dial in and we can pray for them and we can hear what's happening in their life how do they manage with the coronavirus in taiwan and then as well we thought to have a special um uh, special focus like we'll start different focuses and one of the things that that would be really good is to pray for the parents and for the teachers and for the kids who's now in this kind of extra orange circumstances studying from home and and, and, and probably all the difficulties that, that that goes along with that and all the blessings that probably goes along with that so yeah, I, I just really want to encourage you, if you have time, join, join the prayer rooms. Um, it's, it's a real blessing. Thanks. Bye. Good morning, church. How are you? My name is Gandhi Ginting and I am the worship leader in IEC. We just created our new team in IEC. We call it as Multimedia Team. Since it's very new team, we would like to invite people to join this Multimedia Team. What we do, everything related to live streaming, pre-recording, video editing, slide editing for every single Sunday. Please let me know if you are interested in knowing those things. I would like to share my knowledge and also I would like to learn something from you. So you know how to find me, just go to the church suite and get my email address and phone number. Ring me anytime. It's really fun, easy, and you learn so many things from this. People out there in their house waiting for us every single Sunday. So let's do it together. God bless you and looking forward. Bye-bye. Yeah, very good morning to you all, uh, members of the International Evangelical Church. Uh, greetings from uh, the council. I'm Sach Gaya, a member of the council, and I'd like to make an announcement concerning uh, financial aid that would be available to uh, people who attend our church at this time uh, when uh, there's so much financial instability. So the, the pastor, the council and uh, the entire leadership uh, recognize and are aware that uh, uh, some of the people who attend our church are in financial dire straits right now because of the corona pandemic. So a decision has now been made to extend help to people who find themselves in uh, such a situation from uh, an already existing fund, which we call the CARE Fund, that was originally dedicated to helping people with small loans in uh, emergency situations. If you are one such person, uh, then we would like to reach out to you and extend the help that we can to you. So we encourage you to get in touch with us. Please, uh, uh, write to the church via communications at church.fi and uh, Samuel Fogel, the pastor of our church, or Willem Hiki, who is our um, office manager, will get back to you with details and uh, just let you know whether you qualify. At the same time, uh, we of course would like to appeal to everyone who is able to give at this time particularly to this fund uh, to give generously so that uh, we would be able to help as many people as possible 
uh, who, who are facing difficult times right now to just replenish that fund and make sure that we always have something that we can extend to other people that are, are less fortunate. God bless you and uh, keep well, keep safe and keep praying as well.